with state officials giving conflicting explanations as to how the decision was arrived. Joho claimed that he was even instructed to surrender his firearm to the Central Firearms Bureau as Mvita lawmaker Abdul Somad Sharif Nasser became the latest casualty in the thickening plot. Mimi asubui, nikiulizia na ambia yule mmoja wako pia na ye amechukuliwa. Let me tell you, let me tell you, we are guarded by the Almighty God. Lakini tuwambia jambo moja, Governor Joho tutamlinda wenyewe. But what is puzzling are a string of inconsistencies that have kept emerging from state officials with vigilance claiming the removal of the bodyguards was a wider plan to downsize the number of security men guarding governors. This, as local security chiefs claimed, the move was goaded by the need to take the officers for training. Kama una ushahidi, mimi idea yu marwa, chukua hatua. Na kama uta chukua hatua, mimi nita kustaki kukuniharibia jina. Observers have however trained speculations through the tussle pitting the county chiefs and the regional security coordinator Nelson Marwa. The Malindi mini poll reignited the differences when Marwa accused the two leaders of using uncouth means to sway the polls in their favor. God, however, believes Marwa was a gun for hire for top state machineries. Sabiongozi wanavamia police station. Where on earth can you do that? Ever end the inches in Guinea over mere police station, Kamuta back, end the inches Irani Munazijua. Ujaribu kuma kufamia police station. His excellence and deputy are very polite. Yeah. You are trying to provoke the government. Iri mpigwe hapo, muanze kuchoma town, turijoy mipango yenu. The Joho Marwa differences were thrust into limelight in 2012. As the was grappling with a string of terrorism and cases of insecurity. The standoff over the closure of Joho's container freight stations escalated further the altercations. Many residents of Mombasa, however, hold the view that the differences ought to be sorted out with sobriety and reason. To his critics, Nelson Marwa cuts the image of the authoritarian provincial administrators of the 90s. But for his admirers, it's just exactly what the doctor ordered for the fragile and unpredictable coast region. Francis Ontomwa, KTN News, Mombasa. The Big Q in association with DSTV. Right, and the developments in regards to Governor Hassan Joho's security withdrawal brings us to the big question tonight. And we are asking you, is the government sincere about the withdrawal of Joho's security and gun? Is the government sincere about the withdrawal of... Uh Joho's security and his gun. We'd like to hear your thoughts on this one. The number to text in is 22155 and the hashtag to use is Friday Briefing. I'll be glad to sample your views on this one. Say hello to the Barclays Premier League, La Liga and Euro 2016. Now live and in glorious HD on DSTV Compact. Enjoy more value at no extra cost with football match on Supersport and DSTV Compact. Former Kenyan Cabinet Minister for Roads, Franklin Bett, is the new chairman for Agricultural Finance Corporation. As KTN's political affairs reporter Duncan Heimer reports, the appointment seems to confirm that Deputy President William Ruto has finally succumbed to pressure from South Rift residents who accused him recently of sidelining the region. Dr. Julius Conness has also been appointed National Water Conservation and Pipe and Corporation Chairman. When Deputy President William Ruto landed in Kericho County two weeks ago to campaign for now Kericho Senator-elect Aaron Cheriot, hey, 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 he was met with hostility from Kericho residents who openly castigated him for sidelining the South Rift region in government appointments and development projects. The hostility saw the DP publicly apologize to them in local dialect and promised to reward them in the shortest time possible. And just four days after the by-election, former Rhodes Minister and Bureti Member of Parliament Franklin Bett, who lost to youthful Senator-elect in the JAP nominations, has been appointed Agricultural Finance Corporation Chairman. Bett's appointment could also be a reward for sticking with and even for Cheriot, who faced a fierce challenge from Kanu's Paul Sang. Former Konoin Member of Parliament Dr. Julius Kones, who comes from Bomet County, still in South Rift, 
has also been appointed National Water Conservation and Pipeline Corporation Chairman. Sources close to the Deputy President William Ruto confirm that Bet and Coness are being groomed as next governors for Kiricho and Bomet counties, respectively. National Assembly Deputy Speaker Dr. Joyce Laboso is said to have been picked to be Dr. Coness running mate to kick out Bomet Governor Isaac Ruto in next year's general election. It seems Deputy President William Ruto might have been shaken by Kanu resurgence, a tide that forced him to camp in Kericho County for days, campaigning for Cheruyot. In other appointments, Advocate Katwa Keegan has been appointed and claimed authority chairman. Keegan is representing Joshua Sang at the International Criminal Court. Former Police Commissioner Matthew Itaera is the chairman Nyayo Tizon's Development Authority, while Nzioka Waita is deputy to State House Chief of Staff and Head of Public Service Joseph Kinyua. Duncan Haimba, KTN News. Former Kenyan First Lady Lucy Kibaki was earlier today rushed to the Nairobi Hospital after reportedly falling ill at her home in Mothaiga in Nairobi. The incident has since raised concern about the health status of the former First Lady, who has not been seen in public for some time now. But the Kibaki family spokesman says the hospital visit was just for a routine checkup. KTN's Timothy Eteno has the details. The news about the ill health of Mama Lucy Kibaki gripped the nation Friday morning when the former first lady was believed to have been rushed to the Gertrude's hospital for emergency care at 4 a.m. before she was transferred to the Nairobi hospital. She is believed to have arrived at the hospital in an ambulance escorted by two government vehicles at around 5 a.m. before being rushed to the intensive care unit at the facility. In a statement sent to newsrooms by the family spokesperson Ngari Gituku, the former first lady's trip to the hospital was described as a quote, mere routine checkup, the kind that your mother and mine would routinely need to undergo from time to time. The statement further reads, quote, remember our mother's health given their age cannot be the same as that of high school girls, end of quote. So the staff here at the Nairobi Hospital continue to remain tight-lipped as to whether the former First Lady Mama Lucy Kibaki is indeed receiving treatment at the facility with concerned Kenyans on social media to send their well wishes to the former First Lady with the hashtag Get well, Mama Lucy, trending for the better part of the day. The outpour of well wishes perhaps representing the longing by many to have the former first lady make a public appearance after maintaining a relatively low profile for some years now. The 76-year-old was last seen in public during the August 27th promulgation of the 2010 Constitution and since then, the former First Lady, who was quite vocal during President Kibaki's first term as President, has been missing from the public eye. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. To the courts now, Kenyan Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal has lost the application seeking to dis, uh, disqualification rather from the bench of one of the judges hearing her case on retirement age. Rawal had claimed that Milton Makandia was biased and needed to be disqualified from hearing the case. She accused Makandia of allegedly discussing her case with other parties, including the Attorney General. And as KTS Michelle Ngele now reports, the decision by the Court of Appeal to dismiss the allegations could see the Deputy Chief Justice face charges of perjury. It was a big blow for Deputy Chief Justice Kalpana Rawal, who had moved to court accusing judges of the Court of Appeal of bias in delivering judgment of a retirement case. Lady Justice Rawal had filed an application in court claiming that Attorney General Gedumwegai met appellate judge Milton Makandia at the current county club in Nairobi to hatch a plot to dismiss her appeal and that of Justice Philip Tunoi challenging the retirement at 70. In a ruling, the Court of Appeal dismissed her application for Justice Milton Makandia's removal, saying he cannot interfere with the case. I take cognizance that the right to fair hearing is embedded in our Constitution, which emphasizes that justice must be done to all without delay or undue regard to procedural technicalities. The Constitution has vested in the courts 
judicial authority and mandate and has expressly stated that the right to fair hearing cannot be limited or abridged. That right is absolute. The present application is a far cry from what the law requires to be established to arrive at a finding of existence of possibility of bias. It is, not, it is our finding that the application lacks merit as there is no evidence of circumstances that would give rise to prejudice or jaundiced view on the part of the presiding judge. In conclusion, and applying the test in Porter versus Magill, no fair-minded and informed observer, having considered the fact, would conclude that there is a possibility that the presiding judge of this court or this court will not be impartial or fair or will be biased. In the result, we dismiss the notice of motion dated 15th February 2016 with costs to the respondents. Rawal's appeal arose from a decision by five High Court judges to send her home. She argued that the High Court had made a mistake in ruling that she retires at 70 instead of 74. According to the judges, however, Justice Rawal made a fresh start by pledging loyalty to the new constitution and that it was erroneous for the Deputy Chief Justice to claim that she can continue serving under the old constitution that put her retirement at 74 years. Civil Appeal number 6 of 2016 shall be heard on the 7th of 2016 at 9.30 a.m. The Deputy Chief Justice maintains that the Judicial Service Commission is deliberately trying to kick them out of office in the wake of succession wars in the judiciary. Justice Tunoi, who is facing allegations of receiving a 200 million shilling bribe from Nairobi Governor Ivan Skidero, has made similar claims and applied for the withdrawal of Justices Makambia and Justices GBM Kariuki from the case. What will happen next is what remains to be seen. Last year, the Judicial Service Commission wanted the Deputy Chief Justice to face charges of perjury should the allegations leveled against Attorney General Givum Wigai be found to be untrue. The Court of Appeals' decision to dismiss the allegations could very well see the Deputy Chief Justice in court again, this time for perjury. Michelle Ngele, KTN News, Nairobi. A lady of South Sudan nationality Mary Nanyik Lam was earlier today charged on counts of giving alcohol to underage youth as well as being in the country unlawfully and as Katie and Zinzi Kibik reports the youth arrested at the private house party were also taken to court heads down braids hanging it's another walk of shame in Kibera's law courts as a group of teenagers are caught on the wrong side of the law what was supposed to be a celebration party for Mary Luma's son for great grades turned into a sour moment. As sweaters and scarves hide their barefaced expressions, one by one their names were called out. The group ranging from 16 years of age to 20 confronted different penalties. Those below 18 were handed back into the hands of their parents, while those above 18 had to face the charges. A few days ago, despite the government's ban at Fenom Estate, another party just concluded. And as the footage shows, police arrived late to the party. Since Project X came into the spotlight, society has debated on what is morally right or wrong in this scenario and whether high school and university students who are the core target are grown enough to have a fun field.